Moses and I had a very unique relationship. I love that man with all my heart. I still don't believe he died that way. The worst part about it was I got to know the people around him. And in my mind, I felt like Moses really didn't even have friends. I know I've had this question very many times that I have not released music in a long time. It's partly true because in the time of between 2017 and 2022, I think that's the time. Uh, I took a break because I was going through, I don't know, an emotional stage that I didn't think I had the energy to do the kind of music I wanted to do. Even in 2017, there's a purpose of why I left uh, Uganda for a minute to live in Rwanda, uh, because there was something in the industry or some things that were happening that I was like, if I'm, I stay here, I'm gonna lose my mind. And you know, every time you feel like you're going to lose your mind, you go back home to your mother, because that's where love is, that's where home is, that's where everything is. And so I did that for a while. And uh, even after Moses' passing, there was still not the urge to do music uh, because, you know, mind, body, and soul have to work together. <laughs> so I had to take a break to actually better myself. It was the only way I could release in that time, but even at that time, I was not giving the band all performances 120% like the way I like to do it. About new music, new music. I can't believe people don't know that I have an EP that came out last year in 2023. <laughs> it's called The One, and it's a, a seven track EP. I feature only one artist on it, but it's an EP that was just exploring a new me and a new sound. And I believe that my music that I create most of the time is timeless. So even if people have not had the, the EP yet, this is an EP that can become a big banger in like a year or two. Like it, it doesn't matter what time my music takes, it's always going to have the effect it has to have. I've seen how Dagala has blown up on TikTok. Guess what? Dagala was recorded in 2012 at Swangs Avenue. So I believe in creating timeless music, and creating music also as an artist when you're ready. Conversations. My name is Lillian Bawazi. <laughs> I hope you guys enjoy the night. Feel free, relax, enjoy the music. Yeah. I feel the music. Ooh, are we ready? <laughs> it's running through my body. Mr. DJ, oh, please don't stop the music. Take me higher. Ooh, I like this feeling. Feeling, feeling. Party people, people, people. I get into the dance floor.
closer to my body. on a journey to actually just heal myself and be the person I want to be, it took a minute because guess what? I'm from a girl group, then I have a solo career, then I have this happen, then I had children at a very young age as well. So the, the thing is that like me going to Rwanda was not only self-discovery, it was just protection for myself because I didn't know how to react to certain situations when you see someone doing something, when you see things that are happening, even to the people that you love in the music industry and everything, I felt like, let me take a break. Let me go and also see what have I been missing? What have I not seen on the journey that I've been doing? What have I done wrong? How can I come back with strength? And how can I have a more assertive and more powerful voice in everything that I do? So I believe the things that I've learned is that everybody's journey is different in terms of healing. Everybody's journey is special to them. <laughs> and I, I, I learned to be now the person in charge of me. I used to let people take control of who I am, what I'm doing, how I'm gonna do stuff. And I felt like my voice was like, ah, let me just leave this to these guys. They really know what they are doing, you understand? And getting out of that has been so magical for me because now I'm actually myself. And life within anybody starts at any time as long as you're alive. 
when you're in the music industry, you're up and down, you're everywhere. Like, you don't even have time to sit and have a meal with your people. The guys you grew up with, they're like, ah, we don't know you anymore. <laughs> and yet, guess what? You have the same love, but because you don't spend time, you miss out on so much in their lives. So it was just a, a very beautiful breath of fresh air. <laughs>
Thank you. <laughs> you know, Moses and I had a very unique uh, kind of relationship. We had kids together, and uh, I loved that man with all my heart. But not to speak ill of the dead, but there was a time that we went through a rough patch. And that rough patch, in that moment, for me, I had to do it for my children. Because at the end of the day, I want them to remember or to know their dad in a different way, not what I saw when they were not seeing. <laughs> so in that moment, I was like, the best way to protect him and also the kids and their love for him was for me to just separate myself away. I know he struggled with it. All of us struggled with it. The kids struggled with it because, you know, my daughter was very young and my son was very young. So the reason I had to leave at that time was because I had to protect the children, you know? And he didn't do anything bad. It was just bad energy. Like some of the people around him, some of the things I was just, I was just like, this is not right for the kids. These are young babies. Now it's my responsibility. Moses will go out for like two months on tour. You know, I'm left with the children and I also have my own career, but they come first after I give birth to them. Nobody else came first after that. So at the end of the day, me was like, how do I protect the kids from seeing something like this? How do I protect Moses from his kids looking at him a certain way? just to separate them for a little bit <laughs> as we organize ourselves. And that's what happened. And, you know, I don't regret living because I think every step that we take in life is really just done by God. If I had stayed and something else had happened, it would have turned out in a way that God had already seen <laughs> and he didn't want that for me. So I don't regret, I don't regret it because also me, I had healing of my own to do. So I don't, I don't regret it, no. Before he died in 2017, December was here and the plan was to come back with the kids because now Angel Music had started and we were going to come back. I told him, hey, have you finished the house in Entebbe and everything, we were having conversations because he really wanted me to come back. And I loved Moses and he knew that very much. And he loved me too, but he also loved his children as much. So we were coming back and then unfortunate demise happened. <laughs> Have I formed love? Am I in love? No, not, not at the moment. I think that even the person who I would want to fall in love with or whoever falls in love with me, might find me not ready because I still have a lot of healing to do as me. I have a lot of healing to do as a person who has had a great love. The person who follows up, <laughs> they need to be even greater. <laughs>
mo sana nego taka Wadebu zibo mwezi nego gana Kuja ni kulinda baka boli tusa Kusala wo mwanze buena sala wo Olinga medicine, olinga magician, oh my It's in the words of baby Yesterday say I save and today say I gave And tomorrow Moses' passing was just different. I've never lost anyone that close to me. And people lose people all the time, but I feel bad. I lose friends, I lose, I've lost people in my life, but losing the father of your children was, uh, that, that was something else. And the worst part about it was, I got to know the people around him. And in my mind, I felt like Moses really didn't even have friends. You know, and if he had friends, they, they accounted on the fingers. <laughs> the friends who, who, who loved him are people who are not even close to him. People who loved him are not that close to him. They're not with him every day, but they cared about him. They cared about if he's okay. He had different people around him and the exposure after his death. His death, I don't like to talk about it because I still don't believe he died that way. <laughs> I don't believe he died the way he said he died. And I believe that he didn't even die on the date that he died. <laughs> so there are different things, so emotional. You can't put this whole conversation into words. It, it will be too much for everyone. <laughs> but for me, as me, it took me down a road, a rabbit hole, <laughs> if you call it that. And I thought that, wow, <laughs> I, I, I kind of, lost it for a minute. I, I was not trying to do anything. But the beautiful thing about all of this is that my love for the Almighty Father became like <laughs> tenfold. It became like more and more because he pulled me out of the pits. He took me out of that dark place because that road was taking me. Everywhere you're passing, his music is playing. Everywhere you're going, you know. The first question my daughter asked me the day they arrived from Kigali for the burial, my daughter asked me, is, where's daddy? <laughs> I didn't tell them. Yeah. Thanks. Yeah, so when she came at the airport, she asked me, where's daddy? And my heart just broke. Breaking the news to Asante that the dad was, because Asante was seven at the time, breaking the news to him. Wow. I couldn't do it. I had to ask my mother to do it <laughs> in a certain way. So most of this thing is still emotional for me. It's never going to stop. Because I, I really miss the fact that he cannot, he's not here to see his kids growing up. 
or they don't, kids forget, you know? They, they needed the experience and to get to know him. I had so many things that I went through and I can't say them on air here because I don't have evidence about it. But I know that there was foul play. I know that there was something that happened that was not right. The math was not mathing. <laughs> That's all I know. The math was not mathing. Uh, I, I just felt like, you know, when someone comes out there at the hospital, you're doing a press conference and someone says, no, I don't think we need a postpartum. And you're looking at them like, well, why? I remember praying about it because I was so mad for a very long time. And I can't speak on that because I don't know. But I, I, I believe that the people who know, <laughs> One day will come up <laughs> and on their own will say something. Because the Lord told me, leave it, Lillian. Vengeance is mine.
Conversations on the internet, social media have really asked for a blue through reunion. And for me, I think I really picked up the reunion idea, especially when I saw that Jackie is okay. Because Jackie went through a very hard time as well. I thought that it would be time just to have a conversation and to say a final goodbye as the original Blue 3. Um, you know, we had great strides, we made a great impact. Till today, people are still, you know, referencing to many of our songs, they, they're timeless songs. I told you, timeless is the key. <laughs> timeless is good, because when you make timeless music, then that means people can listen to you even when you're not even around. Moses' music plays like non-stop everywhere, and it's not because it's not, it's not because it's gone, it's because music is actually so dope. You understand? So I believe that Blue Tree should, you know, work together when they can. The reunion is more of us collaborating again. Yeah? It's not like the group is now back, you know, because everybody has their own career and everybody's doing absolutely well. But the thing is, there's something that is so powerful about bringing Blue Three back together. And the girls feel the same way too. Maya, on the other hand, Maya has um, not been in contact with any of us for a minute. And uh, I feel that it would be nice for her to be a part of the concert. And it's coming very soon in March, some, some day, the concert. <laughs> but. It's a good venture and it's something that would also empower more people on the world. <laughs> yeah. Nyambo mbulide, okupa muli munda Nse kuma mbulida, undimu muti mamuda Oh, 
I've seen different groups of people uh, doing different things in terms of the music industry. We have Uma, we have the guys who went to Gulu at the time of COVID. Um, then the Federation happened. And I saw the pictures. I was, I never joined that stuff because guess what? If it doesn't make sense to me, I'm not there, you know? So like any other artist who was invited to the Federation, I went and sat and, and I listened to what they were saying. And the truth is, the music industry in Uganda has gone down a different road. I remember when we were doing collaborations every day in our time. We had the Robert Dabbers, the Gino Zambas, the Peter Miles, the, you know, we were like Red and Weasel, Blue Three. Everyone was collaborating. The, the industry was actually thriving. Everyone wanted the best for each other. So something along the way has changed. There have been people in the industry who have been playing the industry and keeping us in that cocoon, right? So when I got to the Federation, I was like, ah, here we go again. <laughs> what is this? But I sat down, I listened, and the first thing that I picked up was unity. It's not about just giving a paycheck. If you don't clean your house, no matter how good outside it looks, inside, is what matters. <laughs> you gotta spray the house, you gotta clean it up. And how do you clean it up? For me, I believe unity is the one thing that can actually grow our industry because collaborations are good. Um, you know, just literally working together and having the same passion for the music industry. People have made money for very many years of musicians. And because we don't have the one voice. That thing has gone on for so long. We should be on levels as other artists around the world. The fight, Uma, every, that's nonsense. The fight is the music industry. The fight is organizing ourselves right now and making sure that things actually move in a certain way. Copyright law getting amended, getting, uh, you know, the, the, the rights for the call back tunes. We have been, our telecos have been enjoying for a minute. <laughs> they have been enjoying for a minute. Even our aggregators have been enjoying for a minute. Yeah. To me, I believe the federation is a very good thing for the music industry. I believe that streamlining the industry is, is uh, going to be beneficial, especially not for us guys who are at our age, but for the generations to come, they'll have a way to have a foundation that is not as crooked as it used to be. On the sax, we have Jonah. <laughs> On the drums, we have a bassa. On the bass, we have Francis Casura. On the electric, we have Jose. On the keys, we have Isaac. And the lovely, beautiful woman right behind me with the beautiful vocals. Her name is Essie. Ba-da-ba-ba-ba-ba Stop 
Shout out to Tasca Mall Conversation. Thank you for hosting us. My name is Lillian Babazi. Shout out to the, the crew of Swangs Avenue, guys. Muchukuba. Hey. Thank you for doing this. We're looking forward to everything moving forward, guys. Banangi. Eh? Mwebare nyo. Wanjo gede. Nzilemuka outro. Thank you, Tasca Mall Conversations. <laughs> For having Lillian Bavazi. I thank you to the band. Thank you to Swangs Avenue, the whole entire crew. Guys, thank you for putting this together and doing it right. Okay? We hope you enjoyed your night. Good night. <laughs> <laughs>